Hey, Sal. Hi, how are you? Cool. How are you all? Hey, Edward. Hi. Hi, Kimberly. Hello, Sal. Hello, Hello Edward. How are you? Doing well. How are you doing? Are you in, where are you in Italy or France? Uh, I'm in France right now because I have a next week I have an engagement with uh, Montpellier University to give a, a presentation. So came a little uh, earlier than I normally would. My wife will be joining next next week. Oh, oh wow! And How's then, the weather there? Oh, it's been quite actually quite cool. I mean. Seasonably cool. Uh, today was a little little warmer than usual. It's probably in the um, high eighties, but pretty dry. Okay. Casey told me he'll be about three or four minutes late getting here. He has to get home from school to turn on Zoom because he's oh. school turned out at four o'clock and he rushes home, and so he'll join us in a few minutes. Okay, okay. sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, so Maxilla is somewhere. Maxilla, Max is somewhere around. I am. Oh, there, hi, Max. Hi. You see me? Kimberly, I like I your the you. artwork yes, behind you. you. Thank you. It seems like you're sitting in a in a museum somewhere. <laughs> or yeah, that's my, uh, my full art gallery. <laughs> in an art gallery, yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Max, I was saying the fact that Casey said he'll be about three or four minutes late. Yeah, I heard. Can you guys see me? Am yeah, I? Yes, I see you. Okay. You don't see yourself? I don't. <laughs> well, you there. Probably a glare behind you, but we can see you. Okay, good. Well. Um, and just so you know, Kimberly, uh, someone will have to be appointed to take minutes um, or at least do a summary afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that other thing? There's some... some... There is some kind of chat bot that I use on other Zooms that kind of records the meeting and takes live notes. Hmm. But I can't, oh, it's called Otter, but I've only used it like once. But is the meeting being recorded? Yes. Mm -hmm. The meeting's being recorded. Yes. Send that to me. I will. I will convert it into notes. I'll take. I'll take the responsibility for producing minutes if the meeting is being recorded, and you can send me the recording. Okay, so the uh, recording will be posted on our city website, and you'll just be able to go there and strengthen the meeting. No problem. I have a program that converts it to to speech, and then I go through and edit it down. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, so, so one action item taken care of, Kimberly. Okay, great. <laughs> but we should probably just go ahead and get started because I uh, still feel a few minutes for Casey coming, and from my look yeah. at the agenda, the agenda is quite full. Yes. Um, well, I started with Casey because the budget will kind of dictate how we move forward with the okay. program because he had a recommendation um, that some of the funds be adjusted. So I just want to, um, and we can come back to that and go to um, something else. Um, but I wanted to start with that just because that may alter the way that we talk about the other grants well, in the future but let's talk about the, the existing grants for a moment and and start there yeah. okay sure so we closed the sister revolutions podcast with ben bernard mm -hmm. um, we were able to reconcile the remaining 563 dollars that was overlap or that was remaining from what he had submitted previously from his trip to france last summer and um, we had him submit receipts for um, the expenses that would total that amount, which included uh, translation for the French delegation visit from Besançon and um, we closed those out. So happy to report that that is clear. Um, we, the um, grant with Elias and I think, um, or Elias, I'm sorry, Elias Alonzo. I think Edward, you were on some of that correspondence, but Sal, just to get you up to speed, we, um, pardon me, um, we received a packet from Elias. I'm not sure if you were on the meeting when he pitched his project to us or gave us like the summary of his project. But following that, um, we went through 
we asked him to send over his receipt so we can kind of close that out as well. But there were some remaining questions because the receipts that he submitted didn't quite line up. There were some duplicates, um, overlap with the timing and all of that. So he just got back maybe right before the holiday with his answers, even though they don't quite uh, they don't quite answer the questions for me, but I need to go back over it again um, with Max and just ask um, for you to weigh in, Max, because it doesn't seem like, um, oh, let me find this document. It doesn't seem like it really adds up. And I just want to make sure um, with some of the grants that we have open, not sure if the message was driven home about the fact that the city does not provide blank checks for them to finish out their grant is well it's actually yeah. in the guidelines of the application yes. but i'm saying i don't know if it's driven home like that that language is in the application but i think that when people are applying for grants they kind of they kind of like oh yeah i'll do all this but they don't really pay close attention so when i say the point hasn't been driven home enough for them because they still submit um, you know, expenses, expecting a check. I want my check tomorrow. I need this and that. And it doesn't really work like that. So we've been seeing that um, with several of the grantees where it's, they have to be explained to again, that you have to submit a paid invoice for the money, the funds that you're requesting a reimbursement from. So just getting that clear understanding that is a reimbursement that you're getting and not a stipend. So um, that language has caused some delays for the grantees because I think in their eagerness to get the money that um, they applied for in the grant, they leave that detail out. So, um, and, you know, moving forward with our next round, that language will be clearly defined. Not that it wasn't before, but it will be even more. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Kimberly. I agree with you because I think it's been a recurring problem. It wasn't just one person. Right. It's been a recurring problem, which suggests to me um, that next time we'll do a better job of on the application, telling them specifically on the application what they need to submit. Mm -hmm. um, quick question for you. With the alias project, how much of that remains unresolved? So it was about, um, so I think if he submitted five invoices, three of the invoices were in question. I'm trying to pull up the notes that I had for that because I went through his packet uh, pretty thoroughly and I was able to make those notes. And I think I sent you the email on it, Edward, but um, Sal and Max, for your information, I just detailed all of the, um, when I'm going over the notes, I detail all of the information from what they submit. Then I go back to make sure it's nothing I'm leaving out. And then when I respond to them, I say, well, I have this question because the way that he submitted the invoices, it was like, oh, September to invoice one, September to October, then invoice two, October to November. But then he submitted uh, a couple of duplicates where those time frames overlapped. And I'm like, so why are we calling this invoice number five with the same dates as invoice number two? Mm -hmm. So... Um, Yes. So I guess oh, wait, hold on one second. I had my doctor's calling. Give me one second, please. I'm so sorry. Hi, Amy. Mike Zilla, the question I was getting at is, if there's a certain amount that we can clear, are we able to go ahead and issue payment for a partial amount? Mm -hmm. At this stage, um, based on my review, there isn't anything that can be cleared as of yet. Okay, well, that, that answers that question pretty simply. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what do you suggest? Well, I wait for Kim to come back. I, I, I'm just um, kind of at um, not sure what the solution is. Okay, yeah, but, we'll see what Kimberly has uh -huh. for us to consider. Do we even know what these invoices were about? Were they paid um, uh, for services received or for items that were purchased? Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> I had to 
make that call from the doctor. So okay. Kimberly, Casey was just asking um, oh, just for okay. a summary of what the receipt, I'm sorry, not Casey. I'll get this. Sal, Sal was Sal. asking for a summary of uh, what the receipts that were submitted for the, what is it? A Tale of Two Cities podcast. Um, One second. Um, That's Alias's project. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he. <clears throat> I'm just trying to. But he had, and, and most of it was the recording. And then we talked mm -hmm. about, um, Sal, remind me, were you on the call when he presented his project, his report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then he, um, I think it was discussed. I don't know if the question was raised while we were on that call, but about the, where the um, podcast would live. And I think they initially had paid for it to live there, but like now you can't find it. And mm -hmm. um, there was, I think that pay, payment for that was submitted, but, uh, or payment. Th so there's another organization that was paying for some of his stuff. And so we are very, try, we try to be very clear about the overlap and that right. there is none. Cause that was, that is also the case for, you know, another one of our, or a couple of our other grantees. And so we just like to try to make sure those lines are very clear. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just uh, trying to find my notes. Hang on one and second. That, that, me that I can send those receipts to you. Yeah, well, that that explains what we you know that overlap because it wasn't clear to me what that meant. So it, it's overlap of the uh, hosting services. Yeah, and let me see. Um, he, I'm just going to pull up the email because I detailed it in the email, and then he, um responded with answers that I don't know if uh, Edward you paid attention to that I did not uh, pay attention to it because okay here it is so um I had questions where okay so he submitted three receipts and receipts two and three were for production and it looked like he was billing for episodes four to six two times so like invoice one will say production of Weiwei podcast May to October, episodes one through six. And then invoice two will say production of the podcast September 23rd, I mean, September to November 23, episodes four to six. So if they're previously covered under the first receipt, you know, I'm like, so are you submitting them again? And so he gave some answers here that I haven't, um, you know, thoroughly gone through, but it just looked like it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, because it's like, we want to, I think that we discovered that sometimes people try to finagle what they want out of these grants and they kind of adjust some of the funding in their favor. And so we just need to make sure that everything is above board. Like if there is someone else, the producer or whoever paying for something or submitting um, a receipt for something, we want to just make sure that they line up and that, you know, it's not just we're taking your word for it. We need to see the proof because what he submitted, you know, clearly outlined those dates. And I feel like if you're trying to get payment for it, you would make sure you double check those things so it's not a duplication. Um, and then he said he did not have receipts for because he said that um, in his budget summary that there were some expenses paid up front by Ixtatan Foundation. And then he said he did not have individual receipts for where the podcast was supposed to live, which was a company called Buzzsprout and Soundstripes. And the producer said it was a subscription she had for her podcast. So, um, you know, I just need to make sure that things like that will be acceptable or how we deal with that so it's um things like that so those were um it was outstanding those two so we had those two those receipts and then oh yes so i said in the budget summary he listed four expenses that he said was paid up front and one of those was 12 months of podcast hosting for the site bud sprout where we found out buzz sprout where we found out you cannot access the podcast anymore there and then um it's some generic it looks like generic information of oh this is for 12 months of audio resources and 12 graphic designs 
So, um, and then he said- he, I was also curious about that graphic design um, right. expense as well. Yeah, so he sent me that. I have not gotten back to him because like I, I need to- you know, go through this to make sure I know what he's talking about. And then he says there were two, two receipts in Spanish sent by someone from Guatemala, a 50% payment made in August and another 50% of that paid in December. So $300 in August and 300 in December, but I don't, I don't have those receipts for reference. And if they were in Spanish, like I can't, um, you know, I'll have to have them have it translated because I can't um, do that. Send it to me. I'll translate them for you. Say it again. Send it to me. I'll send you back. Oh. Copies. Okay, fine. I just feel like he should be required to do that work, though. Since uh, I just I like to. Just to I mean, to I know you don't mind, but like this is the whole thing. Like this is that's a part of his responsibility to. It is. It, it is. But so I, I mean, like I'm happy to send it to you, but I'm just saying. Okay, so. Um, Casey, Casey, want to jump in? Oh, I'm so sorry. Casey, go ahead. Oh, just a couple quick things about the invoices and such. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if maybe not for this time around, but for future ones, we can ask the uh, potential grantees to um, break down, say, um, graphic design for a year, break it down into quarterly or graphic design for January for a specific project, graphic design for March for part of the podcast, but just to be more specific and kind of break it up rather than to just say, okay, all the graphic design that was about however much money. So, so I appreciate that response, Casey. And I think that that's always the intention. They just do this mm -hmm. and they're assigned a, um, not mentor, but someone that will help them once they get the grant. And um, I think that relationship wasn't as strong during COVID and things like that. So they didn't, they weren't able to get that guidance and things like that. So then we, the, as a result of that, we get people giving us generic um, language like that to try to get reimbursement. So yes, those things will definitely be made very clear and outlined before we even agree to grant um, someone a a grant because I mean because these are things on the back end that should not take this long we should be able to you know it should be very cut and dry they should be able to receive the um, grant reimbursement from very clearly defined um, receipts based on what they submit in their own application packet so when, when they submit their application package we ask them to submit a budget as well and so for like the podcast, um, Sister Revolutions that Ben Bernard did, his was very cut and dry in the budget, um, the proposed budget, because it was most of it was going to be the cost of the flight. And then, um, you know, that was it was like going to be like thirty six hundred dollars for the flight, which would leave only four hundred dollars for like meals or something like that. But then over the course of time, he decided because he had multiple sponsors, he was going to change some things up and that's where it got complicated. So we also, um, you know, we'll talk about this. We'll need to kind of stick to what they originally. The budget. Said. We need to stick to the nine items that are approved. Right. Because we, we don't want to veer away from that because, you know, we're all volunteers like that's why I'm saying like things like having Edward or somebody else translate receipts sent in a different language is not on us because that happened with Ben he received he um submitted some receipts in French and when I sent them over to Max like I could read French but when I sent them over to Max she couldn't so she doesn't need to take additional time trying to get it translated like it should be it should come over in a um, English format because that is, you know, where we are providing the grant. So that's just another thing. So um, I appreciate you being, bringing that up and noticing that, but yes, we don't want all of this red tape on the back end. you know, all, all of these. Yes. Go ahead, Casey. And I think all that sounds good. We can kind of encourage them to maybe when they write the proposal, if there are things like, um, I wish to be reimbursed for the podcasts, maybe when they write the invoice, because some of it 
probably they did all this work over a period of time. So it's more of just the nomenclature. So if we just ask them, please be real, very clear. This is for podcast four and five, and this one is for six, but they don't all overlap and kind of muddle into, even if in real life they muddle a little bit, um, we can kind of say, you know, these are four and five and this one is six. So, right. so right. what's, what's the next step with uh, alias? So the next step is I'm going to go through his response and I'm going to reconcile that with what he submitted with the receipts because he says that, oh, this is from this receipt. This is what this means on this receipt. But so I just need to go back and make sure that that is, you know, I need to verify that what he's saying is correct. Then it lines up. And then I will, if I don't have any other questions, I will tell him that, um, you know, we're going to review it and get back to him. So then I'll just correspond with Max to make sure that we're on the same page. And then if it lines up, then we can issue his reimbursement. So okay. what one thing to remember though, Kimberly, is that this is a reimbursement. So he's going to right. need to provide verification of payment having been submitted. Right, um, which I expressed to him. Yeah, yes. okay, okay. Yeah, and that's what I was saying, you know, at the beginning of this call where they have to understand that. And I, I mean, I expressed that to Alexandria for, you know, the... Um, for her for her reimbursement Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark, yes. Um because you know she was very like, I need to pick up a check on Friday. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. And just reminding them all that it's reimbursements, not stipends. We're not giving out blank checks for, oh, okay, is this what you said it was for? Like without verifying. We have to, you know verify what they're saying is correct so and then so so then where are we with alexandra so she just sent me over this morning some um receipts and documentation from the tom tom festival and this is mapping and art yes yeah. project okay all right yeah so um she had sent over some receipts and then there was some mention and this was before my time because i think this was um pre-COVID where it started, but then it- It's actually it, not. This is a grant from just mm -hmm. last year, but I think- was this a, Oh, what am I confusing there's about? There's been a, a lot of she, confusion she, surrounding this one, and I'm yeah, not, I haven't just, been able to figure out yet what's creating it, but it's just from last year, and I- Well, I think they mentioned something about they started before COVID, and then- No, no, the grant was approved in um, 2022, if I were to go through 2020 through or the 23. The grant was approved the last approval cycle. Okay, no, I'm just telling you what the correspondence I got from them saying, like, because this also, there was also, so not in the grant, I don't think in the grant application, was it Tom Tom Festival included? I think that may have been something that was added on. So she's, I'm going through all the documentation she sent me this morning, which is like four different emails. And then there was some conversations with Sylvia and things that were, I don't want to say that was promised to her, but there were things discussed that I wasn't aware of. So it was um, a 23, 24 grant. Okay. So, um, but anyway, just going through all of that correspondence that she just sent me today. And so I should, you know, have something back to her before the end of the week, or at least back to Max to go over this before the end of the week. So we could try to reconcile, but I need to make it all make sense and align with the receipts that she sent. And then the, Tom Tom and Tom Tom Festival inclusion. Okay. Okay. So you said that we had to go ahead and um, eliminate the grant. One of those, one, one grant listed was one that was a holdover. It wasn't what we said would not be paid. Did you verify that? that did we write to the gentleman and tell him that we're not going to pay that? This was the, uh, I don't think we have communicated to him yet. This is the one. Um, the Henry person, Max, is that right? Mm -mm. No, um, I think that Edward is referring to. Hold on, I gotta get to my list. I think that Edward is referring to um, the musicalis, lace musicalis. Oh, grant. Oh, yes. In which case, uh, that grantee just took that trip. I think I'm correct on that. He just took that trip and has submitted some receipts for that one. 
Um, okay, no, no, that's, not the one, that's not the one I was referring to. Yeah, no, but that's the that's the one with um, Cinder. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shelby Cinder. Daniel Cinder. They are yeah. less, less amateurs musicalities. So I he's back. Has he sent you anything? No, I haven't gotten any receipts for that. That's what I'm like. I, I don't have receipts. The only other this receipts. This is the I gentleman. Have. So Elizabeth emailed us about his receipts, his request for a reimbursement. Um, uh, okay. This last I week. I did. Yes. Okay. So I didn't factor that into these yet. I haven't gotten that one into there yet. The only other ones that I have that I've been reviewing right now is Alexandria's from Lewis and Clark. Yes. So. Um, I so, need to... so the two grants that we have people pending on are the alias grant and the Alexandra grant. Yes, those are the ones that are uh, most active right now. I've been in communication back and forth with them, reviewed their documents, requested further um, clarification and documentation. Elias has sent that. I haven't, um, like I said, I have not gone back through that thoroughly yet. Um, I will do that this week and the same for Alexandria. But as I said, she just sent her requested information on this morning. Okay. So, and then I need to also revisit the ones that Elizabeth sent us an email last week that I haven't um, applied to this yet. Yes. Okay. So okay. that is the status of that. So we could go back if there's no... Um, Max, you have something? Yeah, so the grant that you were referring to, Edward, um, that's the one from a couple of years ago now. Um, yes. The, okay. I thought we closed that out. We were going to send, Kimberly was going to send the grantee a letter. This is for, Hen is this the one, the young man name is Hen Henry? I believe so, yes. Okay, yes, because I think following our meeting, I was supposed to send you something, an email on that, and I'm not sure that I did, Max. I don't think so. It is, okay, let me just put that Okay. There. Yeah. Because I put it in the notes of the <laughs> last meeting and I don't think I sent it. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Then. Okay, so I will have that update. And we are we meeting next week? Full yes, we have a meeting. Yes. Okay, so I'll have that update by that meeting. Excellent then. And hopefully uh, I'll have an update where we can close out the other two grants that we just talked about. By that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, before we move on to anything else, with cases here now, let's go back and Take a quick look. Yes, I was going to do that. Thank you, Edward. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I sent you all out an update of this minor recommendation that came out of the last meeting. And then that recommendation was that we take a look at, uh, we had earmarked $4,000 in the coming year for travel, which is like one and a partial one, given the rotation we talked about. But in the meeting, we discussed the need for it. A trip, and we say that the one trip that may be absolutely essential in the coming fiscal year might be the new Ghana rep. And we didn't want to hamstring the new Ghana rep by not having the money available if that was part of the plan was for the new Ghana rep to take a trip there in about six seven months. So we reduced that amount in that in that um, recommendation, reduced four thousand to three thousand dollars and moved a thousand dollars down to the program for the grants and travel scholarships. I didn't try to break it down between those two. I figured, Kimberly, that you would have to decide what you have to make a recommendation as to what should be broken out and how it should be go from there. So that was a only change. Um, and um, so what I guess we want to talk about would be the program and what programs do we see? How, we, how do we intend to make it happen? And of course, in spite of the fact that we want to be very sure, according to what Casey said, and what we all have to say, we want to be very clear that when we give a grant that we are on the same page with the grantee as to how it has to be, how reimbursement has to be requested, and what points and not out of how to get So we have to go over. <laughs> so that's all I had to say. So, Emily? Okay. Casey, did you want to add anything to that? Since I know you were leading the budget thing, or does that sum up what you both agreed on? That sums it up well. I think um, it's more just the larger point of working within the anticipated 15,000, um, knowing that it's, you know, uh, we, we carried a reserve for some years, but um, 
you know, we have to be prudent, but also there may be a possibility for some fundraising and such, but we don't want to depend upon it until we can. So if I make a comment um, to that around the 15,000, when we come back very, very soon, we'll be taking a look at if we were to get more than 15,000, what would we do with it? So we only want to budget and plan for the 15,000 we have. But uh, my hope what we'll be able to do is once we develop what I call the next level of the plan, which means what will we do if we could go beyond where we have, that we'd be able to, in a position to go to the um, city council and justify additional monies. But we have 15,000 now and that's all we can plan for. Okay, um, well, with that being said, I think that, um, you know, it goes into like the, propo the pro proposed criteria um, item that I have on the agenda, which, um, you know, a few of us have said, and we've said before that going forward with any new grant, we want to have the language outlined as clearly as possible and then do our best to assign a steward from the commission for each grant to make sure that the very the very clearly defined language is still followed up with a um, steward from the commission to make sure that um, we want to what we want to weed out is people taking trips so they can just have you know a glorified vacation and say oh I'm doing my grant we need to we need we will have stronger um, requirements for the project to make sure that the deliverables are clear and it's not just I'm going to a foreign country and I'm gonna you know have dinners and go see shows and do all this and then just say oh yeah I recorded a podcast or I did something that you can just kind of wrap up we want very detailed and defined action plans ahead of the grant and I think that with the budget that we have um you know, maybe it's we decrease the amount of grants that we have given. Like, so I think the last time, the last cycle, we had four grants at $4,000. Um, and, you know, we we struggled, you know, to try to get people to apply. So that left us with, um, it left us with few options. So you know, things like what we're seeing can easily happen where people are taking these trips and, you know, some of the programming on their end doesn't really line up with what they pitched. So my proposal would be very defined, um, very defined information about your project and then having that um, partnership with someone on the commission to kind of, you know, guide. So they're meeting very regularly throughout the course of the grant period so we can make sure it's on track because I mean really the easy part of this should be the reimbursement where it should follow closely what you pitched in your in your budget and it should be no questions and second guessing at the end when oh well I did this and I took the liberty of changing this up because we want it to be expeditious we also want to see how it is bringing value to our, our local community and to and pouring into our culture. Like we need to have more explicit definitions of what that would look like in your pitch. So that is, um, you know, what I'm proposing. And then, you know, we can give, also we could provide sample budgets to help guide them. So they would know, okay, it's only going to be this amount for, you know, a dinner that needs to be with a viable business associate on the other end that you might be pitching to um, execute this project. So just things like that. And then we'll put in a section where it says, and this will all be available at the meeting next week so we can um, potentially vote on it where we can have like, you know, pitfalls to stay away from. So they can kind of, it could kind of be, flagged that if you're thinking about, oh, let me just put this in there, then no, you should stay away from that just because, you know, this is not a, you know, we're not sponsoring your personal trip. Can we, if I may? Yes. Two things. One, 
we have to also expect a training session for the members of the commission who are going to oversee a grant. I like that idea. And the second thing is, we felt on a little bit of pressure because we didn't have an abundance of uh, applicants and we went yeah. with them. If we have don't have the right applicants, then there will be no grant. We can't just give a grant in the future because we have the money and no one else. So if no one meets our criteria, then no one gets a grant. And I know it sounds a little harsh, but you see. No, I think that's what I was. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm through. No, I was saying that's what I was leaning towards. That's what I was saying. Maybe we have fewer grants than like, you know, last time where we were like trying to stretch maybe like, okay, well, I can see where that can fit in, but we don't want to have to stretch. We want it no. to be clear to say this makes sense and we can, you know, based on what they submitted, we can vote and say, we think these people should be awarded a grant. So yes, definitely. And that's why, you know, one of our other line items, and I talked to Claire about this is marketing and publicity. So even when with our promotion of the next grant cycle, you know, just make it clear, like um, your creativity and things like that to be considered and what can you bring to, um, you know, val bring a value to the Charlottesville community where it shows enrichment in this culture and then one of our sister cities cultures and like, what can you bring? Cause people have a lot of ideas, but some of them, you know, we talked about this at our retreat, aren't even aware that we exist. And it's just about awareness and visibility. Do they know we're here? Like, and we have a, um, I propose a marketing plan and campaign to roll it out where we get local press um, print and broadcast and um, you know so people know like to the point where not like the political ads but to the point where we want them to say okay yeah I've seen it I get it do you know what I mean we don't want it to be one segment on the news that someone missed and they didn't see like it needs to be robust and that also means um, having our website a little bit more active and um, in a more central directory with some of the other um, local organizations that do promotion that we see. So I think that's all a part of it. And I see, Sal, you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, I, I just, you know, I think you've, you've filled some of these gaps that I had in my mind about um, these grants, scholarships and awards. <laughs> You know, coming new to this, you know, what yeah. I see is this is their biggest budget item. And so um, I guess it, what's still not clear in my mind is, are there, do we have um, clear objectives as what we hope to accomplish with some of these projects uh, and, you know, in specific rubric for you know how we might approve or not approve a budget i mean a, 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 a an application for a grant you know what are the guiding principles i guess that that well, guide there, us into making these decisions there are general guidelines that um you know talk about what i mentioned before about merging the two cultures like okay. why are sister cities what makes the um you know the kinship there like how can we show, like, we want to continue to support the Sister City program. I know you are new to the commission, but one of the cities like Weiwei starts out as a friendship city or it's right. exploratory. And right. then it goes into being an actual sister city. So then what can we do to sustain that relationship? And it is, you know, a delegation visit, having us go there, having them come here, like, and then getting some ideas, like how can it pour into the, Charlottesville community, because if this is a city funded project, where is the value for the city? There has to benefit always, the community. There's always places for money to go. Right. So if the city deems that, you know, Edward does a presentation to the city council. Um, you know, if, if at some point someone in council says, well, why are we giving the Sister Cities Commission so much money? All I've seen is they took one trip here and we had the people yeah. come if they have, we don't want to give them the opportunity to question mm -hmm. removing any funding. So, you know, I think having it more clearly spelled out and what you'll see in documents at the meeting on next week is what my ideas of developing language further would look like. And, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have the opportunity to weigh in and say, okay, I like this, or I think we should add this, or like, I like Edward's suggestion a minute ago about the training session 
for um, sponsors of each grant to help guide them. Like, I love that because we all need to be on one accord. But I think um, just having the language there and defining it there and then just, um, you know, sustainability because, you know, one podcast or one concert, like we we will encourage people to do something with more vitality that would engage people that they would be interested. Mm -hmm. I think they'll find I better. Got that in. It, I'm we've had we've had some some grants that were a lot of benefit to the grantee. I think we have to change the focus. We need to give grants that are going to be beneficial to the sister city relationship, to the sister city organization. So we have to focus more on what's beneficial to the relationship, the city of Charlottesville and our sister city, more so than what's beneficial to a particular individual grantee. You know who might have a. Um, uh, and interest to go. S certain things just basically happen and they're gone, the money is spent, and there's no mention of them again. Right. So at the end of that, I went back last night and reviewed the last 10 years of grants that we've given out. And we have given out a lot of grants that I don't see any results lasting. I don't see anything anything tangible uh, in the city of Charlottesville that I can point to and say, well, this is what we did in 2002, and this is what we did in 2014. And this is what we did in 2021. Then it's it's all basically old history that's not even mentioned. I like to see us do some things, help people do some things that 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 we can keep and we can promote and we can point to what we're doing to build. We want to build upon the relationship, not you know onesies and twosies that go away. Is that right, Kimberly? Yeah, I agree, and um, I think that you know also to bringing our bringing in our relationship or leaning in a little bit more in our relationship with sister cities international and getting some ideas from what other fellow sister cities are doing i have like a whole research packet from some other cities that you know i've been i've been researching um over the last couple of months to see how they do their things like um philadelphia seattle san francisco um Chicago, like they all have these extensive programs and they all do different things. So just um, to be able to show what opportunities are available or things that we can do, like we don't have to be limited, but I think that once more visibility comes to the commission, then the more engagement we may get because somebody locally will say, oh yeah, I heard about this delegation that went on this trip, or I heard about the you know, the French folks that came over and they did this and that and like, what's that all about? And then it's like the more that they see us active and doing, then I think that we would get more people wanting to apply and then they would know like, okay, well, here's my chance to think of, be thinking of ideas so I can pitch. And then they may be surprised if they get awarded a grant and they can tell a friend of how it worked for them and you should apply too. And just knowing that we're there, but a lot of it, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, but I think that um, collectively we can work to make it a stronger system. And I think we learned from the past, um, maybe not, I don't want to say mistakes, but just the way that things were done, like, you know, not having the flexibility to change what you submitted in the budget um, your proposed budget because we see what how that trickles down and it makes more work for our small commission and we want to be working smarter and not harder and saving people time where it's available but also we want to make sure that um, you know we're being very thorough so I think that the important thing is to yes spell out the guidelines but then um make sure we're operating and doing our due diligence like edward said the training and making sure that each person is following up with their grantee if they have not heard from them because i think a lot of people that were assigned previously maybe trailed off and they never heard anything and then they just said okay well i'm just gonna go here and do this with you know kind of um you know moving in the dark so a quick question for you now. So on Tuesday next week, you're going to have a package of recommendations as to how we proceed. Yes. And I think, Max, do I need to have that to you by a certain time before we can present it at the meeting on Tuesday? Yeah. So it's going to be a part of the agenda packet. Okay. Um, Edward, I'm sure, I guess, is going to be getting me the agenda itself. 
Um, by by, by, by probably about to, today is Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You probably mm -hmm. get a Thursday morning. I don't think okay? I have my I don't think I have my piece ready by Thursday morning. I could do it. Would Friday be too late? So the agenda, the agenda should be published um, for the public to have access to it at least three business days prior to the day of the meeting. So um, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, so it needs to be Thursday. Yeah, it should be Thursday. Um, so, but I could have the the agenda. Well, it wouldn't be the agenda from you. The, the agenda would come from Edward. Um, right, but I'm saying the packet, the full packet, needs to be to you by Thursday. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll just make that a goal and I will do it. Okay. And I'll, I'll make some notes too. I was going to ask you to get me the some of the guidelines that you were thinking about for the as you revamp the program. Um, yeah. Give it to me ahead of the meeting so I can kind of look over it and yes. um, just add some things from the perspective of the, the folks who are approving the reimbursements. Um, but it looks like it, we're all going to be getting it around the same time anyway. So I'll have some feedback yeah. for you. Okay, that sounds good. But yes, it will Kimberly, can I ask you, Kimberly, yes. can I ask you to sort of get in contact with Claire between now and Tuesday? So oh, yeah. you give her a heads up and you can have a discussion about, about publicity that perhaps we'll be able to add to and share in the in the meeting. Okay. Because we've already talked about that, but right. do you need me to um talk to her to have a have the um pitch plan because I already have I'm already working on that but I don't if know you have the pitch plan I was just like okay let me step back you if you've already talked to her and you are ready and you want to put the pitch plan into the presentation next Tuesday then that's fine yeah I'm, I'm gonna okay. give y'all a lot of paperwork next week okay so and, and that includes the timeline so um I said this at the last meeting that I want us to be ready to go um, with rolling out this announcement of the new plan. And hopefully I'll have the date that we can vote on so we can promote it. So beginning of the fiscal year, we can start, you know, receiving the applications because, yes. you know, we talked about having the two cycle grants and then um, with the travel scholarships, like switching some of that money, like with this budget, um, if we are doing less grants than we did before and then uh, maybe switching over some of that, money over to the travel scholarships, but just having that program detailed so everybody can see and weigh on it so we can not waste any more time because now we've been about a year without the grants. So we need to um we need to get it out there. So I want to clear these outstanding grants and then we can go into the new cycle clean. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think that I, I touched on all of the bullet points in my yes. uh, explanation, but if anybody has any other questions for um, some of the items that I listed on there, I'm happy to answer. Now, I do want to mention one thing that within the next four weeks, Casey and Sal, um, I, I like to have another budget meeting, and Kimberly, you would include too, but we were focused on programs, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll focus also on the it would be nice if we could sort of thing. So we're focused on what we have, but we want to go one step further and sort of put a, a stake out there as to if we could move further. Yeah. So that we can see what that will do and how, how do we go about to accomplish that, okay? Yeah. Uh, is, is there anything else, Kimberly? Um, I don't really have anything else. I mean, I'm going to be busy putting, like I have notes kind of everywhere. So I'm going to put that all together in, um, readable documents for you all just compartmentalize it a little bit better so we know exactly what we are looking at in terms of grant versus travel scholarship timeline um, guidelines and um, all of those other things and then hopefully I'll have documentation of each existing grant that we're still trying to close out but if I can get between now and Thursday uh, bug max a little bit and try to <laughs> knock out these um reconciliations for uh, the outstanding grants, then, you know, we'll have a pretty hearty packet. Oh, okay. So can you schedule a, a budget meeting sometime in mid to late June? Okay. Excellent. Excellent, then. I will be uh, out of town for part of June, but that week of the 17th is perfect. 17, 18, 19, 20. 
um, if it can be that week, it's ideal. And are we, are yes. we scheduled? I know that this is not the main commission meeting, but are we scheduled to meet on July 2nd, that Tuesday, right before the holiday? I think that's the date. Okay, just checking. All right, what I will do is um, I'll send out a survey monkey tomorrow for the, uh, for the budget meeting, okay? Oh, yeah, and maybe, okay. Yes, we can definitely do that. It sounds very good. Okay. Okay. Kim, do you have anything else? I don't think I do. I just want to thank everybody for joining and Sal while you're in France. Uh, thank you for coming on so late with us. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, and uh, Emily, thank you for being so prepared. I appreciate it. Oh, listen, I hope to be even more prepared next week. So, <laughs> uh, Max, do you have anything to add? I don't think so. Um, you guys are definitely headed in the right direction. Kimberly, good kudos, good presentation. Um, headed you. in the right direction. I don't have anything to add. Okay, thank you all so much. And thanks for letting me bug you so much, Max. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Casey, Casey, would you give me a phone call? If... Okay. And okay. then I should say the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Sal, Max, uh, Kimberly, and Casey. Um, I hope we can have more meetings that are this efficient. Yes. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye.